Good afternoon, dear friends. Nice to be with you again on this Lord's Day Sunday afternoon. And it's my pleasure to bring you a short message from the friends at Union Hall in Broad Street in Cowden Beath. And I'm privileged just to have these few minutes with you and bring you this message that I trust will cause you to think uh, of spiritual and eternal matters. What I thought about was that over the last few weeks, we've seen events that have attracted large crowds of people. Events like the tennis at Wimbledon, the golf at St Andrews, music at various recent music festivals, and so on. And people young and old and in between all attended these various events according to their choice and their liking and whatever attracted them. But very many went because of well-known personalities, uh, in fact, very famous in some cases of these people who would be taking part and the main figures of attraction that were attracting the people. We are all human beings, and as such, we tend to like that we have our own we have our own favourites, that their followers, and named people, and that we revere them in whatever activity is our interest. Well, my mind went to an incident in the Bible, where a similar matter was taking place. It's recorded in the gospel written by Mark and in chapter 8. And it was various crowd gathering events of each and all. The center of attraction was the Lord Jesus Christ. While he was well known, the reason why the crowd followed him was not because of any of these uh, activities that I've mentioned already but rather because they wanted to witness some of his miracles that he performed. And he was providing food as well, and that always tends to attract many people. However, while these things were all true, it, was a, it had a deeper and more meaningful message to bring to them than food and miracles of bodily healing. He asked them, a searching question on one occasion, and that's what I would like to focus in on. And he quoted, it's in verse 36 of Mark chapter 8, and he said, What shall it profit a person, a man or a woman, if they gain the whole world and lose their own soul? That's a question and a half. And I would bring to bring it to you today. What shall it profit a man, a person, a man or a woman, if they gain the whole world and lose their own soul? What does it really matter over time if a person is famous in sport or music or any of these short-term issues? We may follow our hero or our heroine, but soon their name will pass off the front pages of the newspapers and the television reporters, but um, we being uh, human beings, we're, we're built for more than these transient up and down things. We are built for eternity. And these, rather than these temporary pleasures, or this is the vital question that it's what as our inner being, what do we think of these things? What does it matter? But if we lose our own soul, that inner being of ourselves, that will be for all eternity. Can I remind you and encourage you not to neglect that part of your whole being? That which is such a precious value, that that will 
be outlived beyond time and beyond our short passing transient little lives. Have you grasped the immensity of the fact that after this life is over, you and me will live on? So many people want to blank this out of their reckoning and kid themselves on to believe that when this life is over and we die, that's us finished. Not so, my dear friend, not so. The Bible is very clear in Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27, where it says it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. We must give an account of our life to God, our maker, as to how we have used this precious treasure of life that he gave us. The question is, are you prepared for this outstanding event? Isaiah 45 in the Old Testament in verse 22 says, Look unto me and be ye saved, for I am God and there is none else. That's how we can be prepared for this life and into the future life. That when we die, we can face God because we have accepted his Son is our saviour, and I would uh, and encourage you just to think of that. That's the way that we can be ready to meet our maker, is to believe in the work that he did on our behalf. Remember, the Bible is very clear. There is one God, and there is one man between men and God, the man. Christ Jesus. He's the one that allows us, enables us to be prepared to meet God as our maker. And we need to think on these important eternal matters. Thank you for listening to these serious and important spiritual issues. But please remember that they apply to you and me as individuals. We've been talking about crowds, but crowds are made up of individuals. And we remember that we are individuals and we must act for ourselves and we must act timelessly and we must act wisely. Flee to the place of refuge and security in the finished work of the Lord Jesus and the basis upon which God will forgive all our trespasses and sins. I leave this wonderful scriptural fact with you this afternoon. Christ died for our sins. That's my little message, a message that gives security, that gives certainty, and gives preparation for future not only in this short passing world, but for all eternity. Thank you for listening to this short message and may God bless you and that you'll ponder these things, think about them and act wisely and timelessly. Thank you. <laughs>